Hi there, my name's Sally Cathcart from The Curious Piano Teachers and welcome to the fifth video in our Sparkle series. Sparkle stands for S for Sing, P for Patterns, A for Automatic, R for Rote, K for Knowledge, L for Landmark and E for Enjoy. So today we're looking at K for Knowledge, we're getting quite a long way down the word now and today we're going to find out about the importance of building on previous musical knowledge that our pupils come along with. And in this video we're going to be covering why it's important to do this, to build on existing musical knowledge, why it's important to inspire pupils with our own playing, and how you can pre-frame the whole reading from the stave kind of experience. And by the end of this particular video, uh, you'll be able to introduce the concept of stave notation to pupils that does build upon what they already know. And let's start out by taking a look at this building on existing musical knowledge. So I want to give you an example again of, from my own studio. I've had two pupils who started back in September. They both have very different musical experiences from what goes on at their school. Uh, one of the pupils need a lot more input in terms of their musical foundations, whilst the other already knew quite a lot of songs, was singing happily, was able to keep a pulse, could clap rhythms. One, it turns out, was an avid book reader and could follow a score really easily, and the other one couldn't. Very different. And as teachers, we need to build up our knowledge, don't we, of the pupil as quickly as possible, because that is going to inform the way that we teach. Those two pupils both needed different approaches. So creating a list of what to be on the lookout for in those first few weeks of lessons is a really useful activity. You know, can they keep a steady pulse? Can they recognise higher and lower sounds? Or can they clap back a rhythm pattern accurately? Building up a list, having a list, so that we then can sort of fill it up, gives us a better overview of their previous knowledge. And parents as well are an important part of this whole learning triangle. And having a list of questions before the lessons even start that the parents answer about what the pupil's background is. You know, what music does the family like to listen to? Um, again, what goes on at school? That would have been a really useful question for me to have found out much more in advance. And has the pupil learnt another instrument? All these sorts of things. It's so easy to take it for granted, isn't it? And as teachers, I think we end up assuming a basic skill or understanding that just isn't there. So next, let's consider the idea of inspiring pupils with our own piano playing. And I'm sure that some of you have been in the situation where the pupil in a lesson turns to the end of the tutor book and looks at you and says, can you play this piece? I know in the past, I certainly have been in that situation. Sharing our own musical enthusiasms and skills, I think is a vital part of the whole inspiring people to want to be a pianist. We know it's a long road to being a pianist, so we have to kind of show them where, they, where they're going and you know the possibility that they are going to get there. By sharing your own knowledge with them, and in particular why you love that piece, I think you're beginning to pass on and inspire them. You know, for example, does a piece that you're learning have particular squelchy chords, as I like to call them? Or does it have a particular vibrancy or even a story attached to it that you can bring to life? Whatever it is, and it only needs to be a few bars, share, please share, because it's really, really, the pupils really love it. And finally, in this video, let's see how we can pre-frame pupils' knowledge of stave notation before they even start to read it. Now, when I did my PhD research, I had a really good look at tutor books, particularly in the UK, and found that many of them start the reading experience, reading from the stave, on the very first pages. And I find this really interesting to compare with how we're introduced to literacy and how we learn to read. My great nieces and nephews, and indeed Sharon's little boy, Ruel, they're already my nieces and nephews are a bit older now, but from when they were babies, we were reading to them. We were sitting at the, on the bed with them at night and we were reading to them long, long before they even understood words. 
Uh, but there is this process that we go through. We read to them. They know we're doing something particular. And over a long period of time, they begin to associate the, the words with the pictures. They begin to associate the words and the pictures with what is written there. And gradually they go to school and there they learn to read and write. So the whole thing is pre-framed for them, if you like. I think one way we can do that on the piano or in music generally is getting pupils to follow graphic scores, for example. It helps to start the eye tracking process. It helps to start the pre-framing. For example, here's a graphic score of a very popular song that I do with pupils called Doggy Doggy. Just follow it through. Doggy, doggy, where's your bone? Someone stole it from my home. There is more, but that will give you an idea of the sort of thing I mean. So I've just been talking a few moments ago about playing to pupils, but it can also really help to show them the music that you are learning as it gives them the big picture. You know, this is what the young children who are learning to read, Ruel, my nephews and nieces, they get the big picture about reading, that this is something that everybody can do and they will be learning. And I think the same has to, uh, has to apply to music as well. We need to give them the big picture. So I'll often show them a piece of music that I'm playing. I will play them a few bars for it. And I quite like the idea of asking pupils to find something really specific. So if they've just been practicing rhythm patterns, can they find whatever name it is you want to give it, the tar or the tay tay rhythm, the crotchet or the quaver, the quarter note or the eighth note? Or, for example, if they've just learned about a particular landmark note, can they find a treble G? Can they find a bass C? All these things are getting them used to and familiar with the idea of reading notation. So to wrap up, what we've just covered is why it's important to build on existing musical knowledge, why it's important to inspire pupils with our own playing, and how you can pre-frame reading from the stave experience. And following on from this, you'll be able to introduce the concept of stave notation to pupils that builds upon what they already know. So it feels a much, much easier process. Now we've created a workbook to help you get really clear about all the different principles in our Sparkle series. So if you haven't yet downloaded it, I really, really uh, recommend that you do. And do join me in the next video, the penultimate video, where I will be discussing L for landmarks. Hope to see you then. Bye for now.